So another song I wanted to ask you about is Dance with the Devil. You remember working on that one? Yeah, um, six, eight, four, three, four time. Yeah. Mm. And what was the process about, like for making that one? Well, that was, that, that came together a great example in pre-production because we, you know, we had different tempos, I think, going for that song, you know, doom to goon, go bad. And so six, eight was, was, we hadn't done a six, eight song until that song. Mm. Was, in fact, I think on that record, Phobia, we ended up with two songs that were in three, four. Mm. Uh, and that was one of them. I can't remember the other one right now, but I'll, I'll remember it. Um, but Dance with the Devil had such a great course, like from the beginning. Uh, so we knew uh, we had to set it up. Mm. And I think if you listen to the song yeah, through a different lens, as far as the verses go, we tried to make them really super eerie so that, you know, when the chorus came, it would pay off. So there's not a lot going on in those verses. Uh, they're very stripped down and more. Uh, there's a, that tom groove and the bass. I think it's a poppy song, you know, mm -hmm. to me. I love the drumming on that song. The, one of the things that Chad did on that song that we channeled was Jeff Percaro. We both love Toto and Rosanna and that beat in Rosanna. You know, those grace notes on the snare. And uh, so you've got all of those upbeats. And once you start using upbeats in a song and you place them like Chad could just behind, you know, we're also used to, you know, um, God, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, but the minute you start thinking about uh, 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 once you start playing with grace notes and start playing with, with upbeats, um, it sets the groove and it gives you something to move your body to. And I think that record and that song in particular is a great example of something that is hypnotizing and that locks you into the song. Mm. And again, it was an adventurous song for us because we hadn't done the three, four thing really, That's really uh, cool. not to any extent. And then we ended up with two songs like that on the record, which is, I mean, you could even take Unknown Soldier, you know, like if you go to the chorus, that's what it is. It's the same thing again. It's like that pushing that upbeat, pushing that three, four time and having a bass player and a drummer mm -hmm. that were talented enough to be able to play that. That's really interesting. So I guess in general, what is Chad like to work with as a drummer? Like, what, was there anything unique about his approach? How did you feel working with him? He's funny. I mean, Chad's one of these guys that's really great and doesn't, you, you know, he, he goes back and forth between, oh, man, I suck. And, <laughs> oh, man, I'm amazing. You know, that's so awesome. kind of, yeah, I love him for that because, you know, he's, he tries different things. What I love about Chad's playing is he loves gospel music. Oh, cool. You know, <laughs> that he loves that South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia church music. And he listens to a lot of those drummers, but he also loves rock music too. So again, he has that X factor of group. He he can play like a funk song, like play, like leaving the holes. He's got incredible arms. He can play great fills. Like Jeremy was the same. He played great fills, really come up with clever things. Because I always said there was only 21 fills. You know, and everyone would look at me and go, 21? I go, yeah, that's it. Well, you know, where are you going to go? But they would always try and stump me and come up with something, <laughs> you know, or a different sound. Um, but I think with Chad, his his specialty was being able to, to give the band another dimension. Because not many rock bands had a great groove drummer, you know, mm -hmm. and the ones that did the Deftones, you know, or Tool, Danny Carey, you know, those bands set up these moods all the time. And so those are the records we would look like, what are they doing? How clever is that? Uh, and, you know, you try and learn from that. And mm -hmm. where did they get that from? So I think that was it. It was the ability to listen to different kinds of music that made some of the records we did special, working with musicians that had a bigger scope than just putting on hard rock or metal or whatever it was, new metal. Uh, I think that's kind of what new metal ended up to be in a way. A lot of it was, you know, with rap and hip hop and skindreds and, you know, Linkin Park, everything ended up to be um, uh, this conglomeration of music. Mm, yeah. And I think drummers that understood that always did better. 